Today is my second presentation, and since everybody already knows me from the first day's presentation, there's no more secrets. Especially when Aaron Pang, who did the interview with me on episode 25, go crazy, right? Go crazy, lose your ego, equals finding your happiness. He just released on episode 26 my entire explanation of AI and what kinds of things it could impact us. I might as well, well, now I have to change my presentation. So I am going to encourage you to keep thinking about this. Is that if I'm going to develop a 21st century guide in times of uncertainty and change, and in my TED Talk titled Inventing Happiness, to change that title to a Inventing Your Happiness, how to successfully live your game of life, in my book, I talk about this 21st century and all the wonderful things. Today, I'd like to read to you, as attenders of the future in you, uh, number 16, which is April 16th, Remember, in Cantonese, it's sup, mm, sup, lop. It means you're on the fence. You're hesitant. And in yesterday's talk about climate change, I said, don't be. Don't be sup, mm, sup, lop. Don't be 15, 16 and hesitant. Please be confident about this age of climate change because it's real. Be confident about the age of artificial intelligence because it's here. And today, I would like to read you my, res my, my application, basically, essay to Harvard and their data analytics program so that you can hear it from me of why I decided to do it and how you can also do it, too. So here goes. Paragraph 1. As an inventor and investor, I have taken many journeys accompanied by loving mentors, starting with my father. My father who taught us to be self-learners. Meanwhile, my academic mentors always encouraged me to be thorough. Business mentors taught me the value of early proactive investing. I've seen a lot of trends. My media publicists taught me to know my target audiences. Those of you who study marketing would understand that. By combining these experiences, I was able to wisely time my exits from multiple investments. In other words, I learned that proper data collection and interpretation are essential for positive outcomes. Then, my story took a twist. I became a father, and my two children became my greatest teachers. Fatherhood, paragraph two, took a hold of me deeper than I had ever imagined. First of all, like Aaron's interview, I married a girl who's from Hong Kong, and that changed my life. My parents, who had me and started a life in the United States, would end up in a situation where I'd be kind of deaf and dumb. I wouldn't know how to read any Chinese, wouldn't know how to write any Chinese. So when she chose me, my whole life is transformed, and you can hear that in his interview. Well, like an immune response, the initial exposure of parenting changed me. Then, the second exposure from my next child rearranged all of my priorities. In 2017, I sold my co-founder's stake in a material science company and became a high school teacher at a boarding school to learn how I could build a future homeschool. Consequently, my entire family was aligned on our new journey, education. Paragraph 3. As a teacher and house parent at the boarding school, I helped one of my 10th grade students attract $1 million in funding for his business idea. This changed his life and validated my purpose in education. At the end of 2017, I shared my story, Inventing Happiness, on TEDx. 
By 2018, I had founded Dr. Wholesome's Academy to enable learning through immersion and inspiration. And I also share details of how I wanted my two daughters to have the combination of culture, Cantonese culture, Chinese culture, in addition to Chinese writing, in addition to knowing American culture and English. Where am I going to hire someone to do that? My goal of creating a learning environment to influence my own children blossomed into helping others. Taking this education-based goal to the next level went hand-in-hand with business analytics. The question becomes, what if Leonardo da Vinci, Einstein, Michelangelo, Mozart, and in veering off, Yong Zhou Yi, Mu Yinfeng, right? How do you, and Mother Teresa, let's throw that in there too. What if they were not random events, but were outcomes of careful mentorship and education and protection and fostering and nurturing? How many great success stories have we missed or even eliminated because an uninspired student decides to give up and work on something else? Given the upcoming range, severity, and urgency of problems across the globe, we need a greater volume of compassionate leaders, scientists, inventors, other professions, everything, right? Just like yesterday's talk on climate change and today where I am infusing some of this conversation into my essay, if you really want to grow a rose and have it blossom in the middle of winter, look, you've got to have particular mechanisms that need to be understood and implemented. Otherwise, it's just not going to be blooming. So, as we near the end of my application essay, imagine a world where we detect weaknesses in order to enable greater resiliency. My weaknesses as a father, as an individual, I'm growing older. But imagine a society where parents, educators, and students are equal stakeholders on this journey together. What if big data, when properly analyzed, could help maintain the course for these children, our children, and additionally provide protective measures to ensure their outcomes are not put at risk. Better detection, enhanced forecasting, and improved outcomes can become a reality for education and other areas. Post-COVID-19, right? It's 2022 now, April 16th. Stop being on the fence of the 15 and being on the 16 and being determined as opposed to hesitant. Our world has gone digital, accelerated by COVID-19. Artificial intelligence is here. It will be ubiquitous by 2030. That's eight years from now. Data is the new oil and understanding how to use data is the new oil refinery. Implementing these tools to fuel education is our road to a better future. I believe that Harvard, their program in business analytics, which is a subset of the business school, would be a great asset in my mission to create improved educational outcomes for all socioeconomic classes, communities, regions, and countries. You would notice my work, starting with... uh, two years ago with Don Gaul and, um, you know, healthy wellness. It extends from 20 years ago when I started working in Hong Kong on health and wellness and beauty. And then now lately, for the past year plus, I've been working with my friend, Tan Wai Yi, Vindy Chan, on something called Missing Peace, Dot Online, And it focuses on answering people's questions with various data sets, finding answers that are not found in medical textbooks, but are actually found by looking at various journals and looking at the relevancy to their questions. By doing that and agreeing it, I get to time travel. 
Every Wednesday, I got to travel 12 hours into the future and be with you guys in Hong Kong. Looking through the camera and having a great microphone allows me to almost be next to you. And remember, I'm building that homeschool. I'm building that surrounding so that my girls also benefit because by them watching the show, they feel the culture that I could not give them on both sides of the world at the same time. I have to choose one. If I'm in Hong Kong, they don't get the, the Americanized versions of things that I grew up with. And if I'm in America, they don't get the Hong Kong version. But my promise to them is that they didn't ask to be born. So in doing these shows, which are purely voluntary, I get to give them a gift, a gift of love, and surrounding. But how could this be possible without technology, without AI, without the ability to look at data sets? None of this would exist without Harvard's program giving me the insights into what people need. I was lost. I had stumbled upon wonderful things, but I was lost. Tarot cards and fortune tellers have been sought after for ages to give glimpses of the future. But today, with artificial intelligence, one could look at the data sets and the mathematics behind each thing, each item, each answer, and to be able to weigh the relevancy and the impact. That is the power of AI. Imagine the mathematics influencing and helping out and making the world a better place. Now, I know there's naysayers about climate change. We talked about that yesterday. Likewise, there are naysayers about AI. It could turn into an evil AI. Well, of course, everything could turn nasty or negative. But let's not be negative. Let's not be like Elvis's song, Can't Help Falling in Love with You. It's a song about deep love can't help falling in love with you. Why is it can't? Why does it have to be can't? Right? Imagine dating a girl and saying, wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. It's slow. Right? He goes like, wise men say only fools rush in. Right? But I can help falling in love with you. Shall I stay? Would it be a sin if I can help falling in love with you? It sounds like deep love, but there's a lot of parts where it's just not direct and it starts with a negative. So does it have to be like that? And I mentioned yesterday in Ed Sheeran's song, Perfect, the song is titled Perfect. There's no negative start and it's simple, it's just perfect. And he goes like this. I found the love for me. Oh, darling, just dive right in and follow my lead. Well, I found a girl, beautiful and sweet. I never knew you were the someone waiting for me. Wow, right? So direct. If you're going to date someone, be direct. Be direct. Don't talk about wise men right? Talk about the sequences. I found the love for me. And then darling, just dive right in and follow my lead. Wow. No wonder in 2017, compared to 1961, Ed Sheeran is getting more clicks, right? More clicks because people just of all generations, they're, 
hearing the song and they can feel it, it's direct. So AI, direct it. Change the outcome. Make it wrong. Don't hide. Don't run away. Don't fear it. Confront it. Change it. Artificial intelligence is code and software that's written by human beings. Contribute. Change it. Make sure it doesn't contain some whack code in there that is embedded as a Trojan horse and starts causing havoc everywhere. We have got to stay on this planet. And with your help, we could have an extra 500 years of bliss on this planet. We don't have a plan B, a plan B. But with your help, with your help, with your love, with your contribution, we can do it. And just like my application started off with me not knowing much about AI, today I can appreciate it. You can do it too. So remember, you can do it too. Thank you.